Bukaro Khan often gets criticism for being a boring opening. And to an extent, that can be true. But as with many videos on my channel, I show why I love the Cairo Khan so much and how it isn't boring. And this game is another example of that. And we have the Cairo Khan with the Knight C3 variation. And I play my favorite line after D4, the Tartakawa, which is really popular, where after Knight takes F6, E takes F6, this is all theory. The idea is that yes, you double your pawns, <clears throat> but both of your bishops are now open. The c6 and f6 pawns do a great job of controlling some key squares that these bishops would potentially have gone to otherwise. And they give a nice grip on the like your central squares. Knight f3 isn't really correct. It's called a book move. But if you if you play white in these structures, your your setup should be c3, bishop d3, knight to e2, and queen to c2. And the reason you put the queen and the bishop on this diagonal is because you want to pressure these squares in my position. That's the point of the opening from the white position. And the reason the knight doesn't come to f3 is because the bishop can come to g4 to pin, which means the queen will struggle to go to c2 because I can take and damage your structure. And the only other way to get out of that is to put a bishop on e2 to guard the knight, but the bishop, like I said, wants to be on this diagonal from c3. So that's what you want to do if you're white. So he goes knight f3, which is subpar. It's not losing or anything, it's just not great. Bishop d6, bishop d3, castle, h3. Now h3 makes sense. Like I previously said, the problem with going knight f3 is that bishop g4 can be played, and this pin is really difficult for white to break. So he goes h3 to stop me from putting a bishop on g4. Computer doesn't like it, thinks it's a bit of a waste of time. I go rook e8 check, and... Bishop e3. This is another reason why the knight on e2 is good, because the knight blocks the check from the rook. The bishop is a bit vulnerable, and here I should play bishop f4 to try and exploit that vulnerability and put pressure on the pinned piece. I have another video on my channel more dedicated to that called PP on the PP, if you want to check that out. <laughs> and quickly, uh, just a bit of a pause. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please drop a like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I'd like to try and get to 200 subs by the end of March. It, uh, that would be, you know, pretty cool. So please join the community if you enjoy. But back to the game. Bishop E3. I go F5. Computer doesn't like F5. The idea is to go F4. There is another idea behind F5 where I'm blocking this diagonal for the bishop. And the reason the queen normally comes to c2 is because f5 is not playable because I've only got one defender and white will have two attackers because f5 shuts down the diagonal for white's bishop. But after castle, I actually play f4. So I reopen this diagonal for white, but I attack this bishop and force the e-file open because the bishop has to drop back. You can argue it blocks my bishop as well, but my logic is that my bishop was never going to have much joy down this diagonal, especially with h3 being played. There's no vulnerable h2 pawn, and so I can use this pawn to try and restrict white's position. So I go queen f6, just over defending this pawn so my bishop can potentially move, applying a bit of pressure to d4, and just getting my queen out. Bishop c3 aligns the bishop and the queen, potential discoveries with d5. So I go queen h6, guarding the f4, f4 pawn still, also setting up potential sacrifices on h3 if I can maybe lift a rook, but white's bishop does a good job of stopping that. It's just a nice square for the queen, it's out of the way, but it is, it's applying pressure 
to some useful squares. So rookie one tries to trade rooks. I don't want to do this because here I my 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 rook still needs to get out and it's going to take a couple moves to do that. And white has control of the e file. So I go bishop e6, which is the best move, just to block the e file to give me time to get my knight out so that when I want to open the e file again, I can recapture with a rook. So bishop c4, I can't take because rook takes e8 and I'm very losing because I can't develop my pieces. I don't know why chess.com is having some problems. So instead I go knight d7 and my opponent takes. We have takes, takes and takes. And I have control of the e-file. If my opponent tries to contest this, then I can play rook e8 and maintain control of it. He could trade everything with something like this. But, you know, it's, it looks pretty equal. And as black, you're never going to be upset about that. So queen takes e6, queen to d3. I go queen to d5. The reason is because I can't play rook e8 because of rook e1. And my queen can't retreat to defend my rook. So I'm going to have to give up my queen for a rook. Because if I move my queen, I lose a rook. So I go queen d5 with the intention of playing rook e8 next. But he goes rook e1, which is expected. I go c5. And the idea is after takes, I can take the queen and then take on c5 with the knight and attack this pawn. And after I move like d4, I mean, I could probably drop back to e6. And I've just created a weakness in white's position because he now has an isolated pawn. So it's just a little bit of a nicer endgame for me. But he goes rook d1. And this allows c4. And it's funny because the pawns that I was previously showing you guys on f6 and c6 controlling these central squares have now both advanced up to f4 and c4 and are controlling some key squares in my opponent's position, really restricting his play. So queen e2 takes control of the e-file, stops rook to e8, and I go king f8 with the intention of defending the e8 square so my rook can go there. Rook e1 stops that because rook, me playing rook e8 would be checkmate. But I'm also in no danger because my bishop controls e7 and my rook controls e8. So white maintains control of the file for now. But knight f6 sets up rook e8 because now the knight defends the e8 square with the king. My knight is also potentially coming to e4 where it can exert a lot of pressure on the white position alongside these pawns, right? So queen f1's played, which I probably could play knight e4 straight away, and after something like queen e2, maybe I can play f5 and cement the knight in place. But I go b5, just to secure my c4 pawn, because the queen is still applying pressure to it, and then I can continue with my plan. We have a3, because I am also kind of threatening to go b4. If white plays a move like king h1, I can go b4 and further like entomb this bishop. And the computer wants a5 here, just having massive, massive control in my opponent's territory with my pawns. And the d4 pawn is weak. It is weak. So a3 a5, so I'm again threatening b4, and he drops his bishop back to d2, so that b4 doesn't come with tempo, and I go knight e4, I'm attacking the bishop, I'm not, I'm not going to take it, because my knight is so good compared to this bishop that can't move, but my opponent can't really kick my knight out, we have bishop c1, 
which looks to be freeing up the d2 square so that his knight can challenge my knight. But here I go f5, and if his knight now drops back, not only does a d4 pawn hang, but imagine a d4 pawn wasn't even hanging. If he, if he ever takes my knight, I can take back with the f pawn. And these pawns are doing some serious damage to the white position. And a move like e3 or f3 at a good moment will be crushing. So we have f5, c3. First, securing the d4 pawn so that knight d2 can be played potentially. I go h6. I go h6 because I want to play g5 to support the f4 pawn so my bishop can move because my bishop's currently defending it. But also g5, I could potentially play g4 because after takes takes, again, I will have pawns on my opponent's fourth rank potentially advancing to the third rank. So knight d2, g5. Again, if he takes, I take with the f pawn. And I mean, look at this space advantage. It's ridiculous. White is in a lot of trouble. So g5, f3, which forces my knight to move. But my knight goes to g3, attacks his queen. And his queen only actually has one safe square, f2. And even from here, the queen can't move anywhere that's safe because of the dominance of my pawns and my knight. But I still need to break through. So I go b4 because I need to try and force a way through. The computer likes rook e8, but I wasn't a fan of this because I thought the queen could get, it, get herself into the game through the e-file. To be fair, there are actually no entry points, like literally every square on the e-file is defended by my pieces. But I didn't see a reason to allow this. So I played b4 and I thought that I can utilize my rook on the queen side and argue that his rook is useless on the e-file because it blocks the queen's access to the e-file. And again, I control every single square on the e-file bar e1. So his rook can't do anything anyway. So we have takes takes and b3. b3 is a strange move. Here, because his bishop's trapped on c1, I'm essentially threatening to bring my rook either to the first or second rank to apply pressure to his position laterally and maybe take on c3 and try and win this pawn. But white is getting suffocated here. So he tries something desperate with b3. He just tries to break out, which makes sense. Here, the best move for me is actually not to take either pawn and play rook a2, pinning the knight to the queen. The queen can't move anywhere, so the knight can't be un get unpinned. And after a move like b takes c4, play queen a5. And if this is played, then bishop takes, and I'm attacking the knight. So after rook d1 defending the knight, rook c2. Now this is a line that I'm never going to play, because I don't see the need to sacrifice two, well, one pawn. Yeah, I, I don't see the need to sacrifice a pawn. So I take on b3. Now taking on, oh my god, I don't know what that is. Taking on c3 is apparently better, but I didn't like knight to c4. I thought it gave white a bit too much activity, because his knight's attacking my bishop, it could come to e5, put pressure on my position, and my c pawn isn't really going anywhere. So instead I take on, instead I take on b3, because my idea is that the knight can't take it, so after c4, attacking my queen and cutting my queen's connection, I come back to f7 to keep an eye on my king size squares, which the computer doesn't like, because I assume he can just take on b3. But here, because I keep my queen on the diagonal, I can take on c4. So the move is apparently d5, shutting down my queen's attack on c4. But this is a hard move to play 
especially because it opens up this weak diagonal for my bishop. We'll probably play a move like queen c7. Pressuring, pressuring z4, threatening bishop c5. My opponent also has 20 seconds, bear in mind. So we go c5 to attack my bishop. But this opens up my queen's defense of b3. So all I've got to do is drop the bishop back. Rook e5 is played. Which is a strange move. It allows rook a1. And the computer says, yo, just bring the rook back. Bring it back. Because this pin is a problem. He also... Um, let's imagine that he gets out of the pin somehow. And... He tries to attack my rook. Rook h1 is also mate. So it's a really difficult pin to break without bringing the rook back. But as a human, it's really difficult to move a piece somewhere and then bring it straight back to where you put it. It's almost like you're admitting you were wrong. Oh my god, please. So he doesn't do that and he goes queen e1. Which sets up a battery on the e-file and defends the bishop. But I just have b2. And the bishop is under attack. It can only take on b2. And then I win the queen for a rook. So after pawn b2 my opponent resigns. And I get a nice little Karo Khan win. Again. In a game I was really happy with. Because I think this position best sums up the game. Where I'm not up any material. But. Oh my god, I've got so much space, and my opponent cannot move. His knight can go nowhere. His bishop literally can't move. His queen has no legal, well, no safe moves. And the rook also can't do anything except for go to d1. So I was really happy with this game, and I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did stick around, please drop a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Um, like I said, I'm trying to get 200 subs by the end of March. And with that, Thank you very much for watching.